Hi, I'm Terry Abura, and this is my experience on growing up as a woman. Um, where do I start? Uh, my, I've had a lot of experiences growing up as a woman. Normally, it's mostly general on women, and according to considering the fact that I grew up in a place where we had a lot of people growing up, and so we had men and women alike, like boys and girls, if I might say like that. And uh, as a woman, I grew up knowing maybe boys or men are stronger than women, which was a notion that was put in our minds. Every day you wake up, you know there are things that are specifically for women and there are things that are specifically for men. I remember an incident that has lived with me for a very long time. There was a time uh, with my brothers, uh, they were like, no, you should not come home past four. You should not walk alone because you are a woman. And people uh, assume that women should be vulnerable and maybe weak, if for lack of a better word, weak. That you, there are things that you can't do yourself as a woman. You cannot walk by the roadside alone. You cannot uh, come back home at a certain time just because you're a woman and you are weak and you're vulnerable. There is nothing that you can do alone as a woman. You can, there are some activities that you cannot undertake as a woman. Uh, well, we were growing up uh, in a, in a, in, a, in the place that I was in uh, during menses, you'll see there are little girls that maybe started their periods at a, at a younger age. And people, you are like, how, how would you start periods at this young age? And those that were, that were older, like myself, when I, when I became older and did not yet start my period, people were telling me, like, you're not going to give birth. You know, you are not going to, you are not a complete woman. And people will laugh at you and point at you. And, you know, you feel like you have a responsibility of starting periods. Yes, it's a natural thing. But people do not understand that sometimes it takes uh, quite a while for you to start your period. And for someone who is already a high school, <laughs> high school and, and, and you're not yet on your period, in an environment where people understand that at a, at a certain age, you as a woman, you should have already started your period and your menses, and everyone's pointing at you. Imagine Terry has not started her periods, and uh, younger girls have started periods. It makes you feel like you have a responsibility to start your menses. And, uh, I think it's okay when you start your menses, unless it is now a medical issue. No, no, unless now you are getting like older beyond a certain age when, when you not started your periods. In school mostly, we were being told like, when you reach, in our times when you reach class eight, you, you used to choose maybe jobs when you approach exams. And uh, I remember there were times we, some of us chose to be lawyers, some of us chose to be engineers and pilots, and you are being told, no, you are a woman, and it is the, the, uh, the chances of you becoming a pilot are very minimal. You cannot become a pilot. Maybe you can be a teacher, or maybe you can become a nurse, or maybe you can, uh, maybe, do hospitality and tourism you just cook because they feel that uh, other big jobs like engineering or maybe being a pilot are things that need a lot of intelligence and that makes uh, that makes you like as a woman feel deme demeaned because you uh, you feel like you don't they i mean the community take like they do not have the capacity of taking technical courses or maybe being something bigger than bigger than maybe hospitality. I'm not saying that hospitality is not a big thing because uh, professionally I'm, a, I'm an hospitality and tourism management student, but uh, it is not, uh, people look, think like these are little things that women should be doing. You are the one that should parade your beauty. You mean you should, you should be carrying utensils, you should be washing dishes. And people do not take hospitality or uh, jobs like nursing, because the nursing as serious courses because they feel it is all about maybe cleaning. It is all about maybe just washing things and just looking pretty, maybe hairdressing, you're being told like you, after form four, maybe go and do hairdressing because that's, you are a woman. And uh, I've actually been told like, ah, 
I've, I've once talked to someone and, and I've told them what I'm doing and they're like, ah, you are a woman. Yeah, it, it makes sense. Like, you are, a woman, you are a woman and you do that course. And when you're a woman and you tell someone you're doing engineering, they're like, whoa, you have the balls to do that kind of, kind of um, a course. And people do not believe mostly that women can do greater course. Yeah. I think gender-based violence is a, 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 it, a, it is a wide thing to say and uh, yeah mentally i've been maybe mentally not phys i'll not say physically because uh, oh i don't know how people see my appearance maybe scare people i might say that way but mentally someone will say no we we cannot maybe associate with you because I, you look violent, you know, and you know, as a person, people do not know how that feels for a person when people do not want to associate with you socio socially. Uh, people like put you aside and tell you, no, uh, Terry cannot do these things, or Terry cannot, uh, I mean, laugh with people. And at a point in my life, I felt uh, uh, like isolated from my other, from my side of gender like from the female side and mostly growing up i had a lot of male friends than uh, than female friends because the female friends were like no terry won't do it if people want to play games no terry won't do it because you know you feel uh, isolated and people do not understand how that is uh, mentally torturing someone and maybe it makes you like feel lonely and feel neglected and you feel you you, you feel your value as a woman is being brought down uh, physical in the current society i think women have now been mostly empowered especially in this generation that we are in but we cannot deny the fact that there are still some parts of kenya or some parts of africa where women are still demeaned and so in my side of, uh, of staying or where i reside in in my place right now or the environment that I live in right now, I think women have been more empowered and women can now make decisions uh, and maybe people listen and women are now currently in position. But I still go back to my uh, ancestral home and still see women being demeaned and it is a fact I have sisters that and uh, there are spaces that they cannot go in there are clothes that they cannot wear when they go where men are because uh, men still think that maybe women there should not wear clo I mean trousers or women should not wear uh, clothes that uh, they should wear only long sle sleeved clothes they should cover their hair and also in churches some people still believe that women should sit down on the floor and uh, yeah to some parts of Kenya I'll say specifically Kenya especially where i come from uh women still do not have that exposure of uh, of the current uh living or in this era of living and they are still way back behind and men do not even believe that women should look at them in the eye and yes i have had this experience where i looked at a man in the eye while talking to them and they told me that was very rude a woman should look down <laughs> while they are talking to a man and they, they, they he told me that it is disrespect to to men when you look at them in the eye while you are talking to them like you should bow your head and me that came to me as a shock and i remember i shared with my sister and she told me that that was a very rude a very rude gesture and i it just shocked me and it came to my mind like yeah maybe it is rude to them because they are not exposed because i believe when you speak to someone you should look at them in the eye so yeah